You might have noticed that sometimes experts in their fields doubt themselves and feel like they don't belong, while some people who lack the necessary competencies are unchallengeably self-confident. The occurrence of such feelings is the result of two opposite psychological phenomena, namely imposter syndrome and the Dunning-Kruger effect. Let's explore the origin of these phenomena and how to deal with them. If you like our videos on psychology, please subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. Imposter syndrome is a psychological phenomenon of doubting your skills and achievements. People experiencing imposter feelings tend to attribute their success to luck and external factors and circumstances, and take their failures to heart. People struggling with imposter syndrome often see themselves as fakes who deceive everyone or occupy someone else's place. In most cases, the imposter phenomenon rears its head when vocational accomplishments are involved. Despite your education and experience, you might still think that you have insufficient knowledge and got your job by chance or mere luck. And when you're good at problem solving, your inner imposter will make you second guess your choices or else you'll be haunted by a fear that one day you'll be caught on the wrong foot. If such psychological patterns were limited to inexperienced or unqualified people, they would hardly receive so much attention and research. Unfortunately, even the greatest minds grapple with imposterism. One month before his death, Albert Einstein said, The exaggerated esteem in which my life work is held makes me very ill at ease. I feel compelled to think of myself as an involuntary swindler. If you're undergoing the same experience, you may oppose comparing yourself to outstanding figures as drawing parallels between you and them may result in bitter self-deprecation. Albert Einstein was worried that there were people better than him. Those who think that their achievements count for nothing may find some useful tips in our course. Get to know yourself. The link is in the bio. In truth, imposter syndrome has nothing to do with a lack of knowledge or expertise. If so, why do so many talented and experienced people go through self-doubt? One of the things that imposter syndrome stems from is cognitive biases which appear because our brain is sort of lazy. Every day it deals with the challenge of processing thousands of thoughts. To make life easier for itself, the brain has learned to separate an inflow of information into similarity-based patterns. To give you an example, when we meet an attractive person, we may be easily misled into believing that this person is perfect. This simplified categorization, though seems to save us time, represents a cognitive bias known as the halo effect. Cognitive biases accelerate a decision-making process by making us jump to conclusions that seem to be at our fingertips. Although we may enjoy the benefit of fast-track solutions, the halo effect may be the cause of irrational and wrong actions we can spur ourselves into. And this is how imposterism comes about. It might start with a single mistake that will sow the seeds of doubt. The brain will do its job. It will process your experience, categorize, and store it for later. Next time you come across a similar situation or one remotely like it, the brain will launch associative processes that will quickly identify your current experience or impression with the pattern formed by your brain in the past. And this is how you get caught up in a self-perpetuating cycle. Another cause of imposter syndrome has to do with the locus of control. This concept refers to how firmly a person believes they have control over their achievements and failures. There are two types of the locus control, external and internal. The external locus of control means we attribute all our triumphs and defeats to external factors. We're desperately looking for the guilty party, refusing to take any responsibility for our own actions. The internal locus of control means the opposite. You hold yourself accountable for your accomplishments and failures. The internal locus of control is more typical of mature and responsible people. This type of locus suggests introspection, self-reflection, and both personal and professional development. People struggling with imposterism have a distorted locus of control. When they succeed, they are prone to underestimating their effort and contribution. But when something goes wrong, they immediately take the blame. As a rule, such a dualistic perception of reality derives from perfectionism. It is a personality trait that makes a person strive for the ideal. Having said that, perfectionists don't have a crystal clear idea of what the ultimate yardstick looks like. People with imposter syndrome commonly develop a maladaptive type of perfectionism. They demand more than they can ever fulfill. 
These unjustified ambitions lead to stress and anxiety which eventually grow into an anxiety disorder. Perfectionism is usually rooted in childhood. It often appears when parents set the bar too high. They expect a lot from their child, noticing for the most part only failures and hardly ever recognize or praise their accomplishments. Quite often, children mistake this attitude for care as parents are supposed to take care of their kids. And when these children grow up, they repeat this pattern when caring for themselves, and this has a negative effect on their psyche. The other side of the coin is the Dunning-Kruger effect, which also does not let us evaluate our competence adequately. But whereas imposterism prevents you from internalizing a sense of competency, the Dunning-Kruger effect spurs us to overestimate ourselves. If you've ever come across some know-it-all, there's an even chance you've met a person affected by the Dunning-Kruger cognitive bias. As soon as these people learn something new, they can't wait to share their newly acquired wisdom with other people. And when they have scarce information about something, they aren't held back. On the contrary, they wouldn't miss an opportunity to chip in with their comment. Since those influenced by this cognitive bias cannot set themselves straight, they tend to form an inflated opinion about their capabilities, which makes them more confident and boosts their self-esteem. But what happens when they start to dig deeper? This is when they begin to doubt themselves and fall under the control of imposter syndrome. Both the Dunning-Kruger effect and the imposter syndrome arrive from cognitive distortions and, in both cases, people, whether they exaggerate or diminish their potential, appear to miss out on critical thinking. The Dunning-Kruger effect is looming on the horizon when people choose a certain parenting style known as indulgent hyperprotection. The child becomes the apple of his or her parent's eye. Overprotective parents admire every little thing their child does, thereby feeding up an illusion that the child is infallible. Although it's important to make your daughter or son feel confident, it's equally important to help your children understand that it's okay to make mistakes. Because of indulgent hyperprotection, children internalize a sense of themselves as perfect. This may have a negative impact on their life, making them pay a heavy price later when they're adults. No one is going to put them on a pedestal, and they are going to end up disappointed with their potential unfulfilled. The first step in dealing with these psychological side effects is to admit that you are under their sway. Secondly, you have to work on critical thinking skills. Question and verify information that seems indisputable, and track automatic thoughts that trigger cognitive biases. It's hard to fight imposterism, but not impossible. You need to convince yourself that self-deprecation is destructive and, what is more important, it's disconnected from reality. Here is a practical tip. Write down all of your achievements. If you stumble at this stage, ask someone to help you. Perhaps you think that your skills are insignificant. If so, someone else's opinion would come in handy. It's also critical to learn to accept your mistakes as they teach you lessons. And when we learn from these lessons, we get better and better. If you would like to get more how-tos on battling the holdback factors that hinder our personal growth, you may like our course, Get to Know Yourself. The link is in the description box. Do you sometimes have fraudulent feelings? Have you ever felt unrecognized? Share with us your experience in the comments section.